you ever wondered how to retire early? Watch this video. I am going to tell you exactly how, how I was able to retire at 45. I arrived in America with $12 in my pocket. I am going to tell you how I grew from $12 to 1 million by the age of 22 and you could too in this video i am going to tell you all the disciplinary actions i took in order to make the money that i did my investment strategies mistakes i made along the way tips i picked up on the stock market and after traveling to south america europe and asia the three best countries to spend a long time in i spent most of my life so i could retire early come on with me and i'm going to tell you all the things i did some of the things i did to financially grow and increase my wealth were one I denied myself of cable. So right through the years when my children were growing up, I just got a small television and I didn't watch cable at all. This way I could focus on achieving my goals and manage my time effectively. My thought was you either sacrifice now or later. And I was going to pay the price when I was young. So no matter which state you're in right now financially, it's never too late to start. I deleted all my social media accounts. If you think about every time that you sit on social media, how many hours you actually spend per day, that you could effectively be doing something else or learning something else in order to achieve your goal and your objective, it is literally astonishing to fill my time i enrolled in college so over the years i got my real estate brokerage license i was a licensed optician i got my medical degree and on my spare time i taught myself how to trade on the stock market how to invest my money and develop a portfolio how to allocate my portfolio how to develop a website and now i'm actually learning how to start and do a youtube channel and make videos so please like and subscribe so we can go on this journey together you name it I tried it. Anything to keep me focused and to get me to where I wanted to be. And this was how I retired at 45 and I'm still retired and have not dipped into my portfolio over the last four years. Now granted it wasn't easy. I would only buy very economical clothes, shoes, I'd only buy economical cars. You know, with not having cable, I only got a small television. I encourage my children to read instead of, you know, being online all the time. So it was a sacrifice. One that even till this day, I still have it. This dress, I think, cost me like $7. <laughs> so, you know, it's kind of hard to get out of this frugal mentality when you've done it for so long. But it helps you to save and to keep things in perspective in order to achieve your lifelong goal. So over the years, I would ask myself, how much do I really need to retire? This changed from year to year as inflation affects the dollar value. Analysts say that if you have one million in your 4K, you've paid up and have no mortgage in a $500,000 house, you just might be able to retire at 60. Mm. I said to myself, that sounds very far-fetched. How many of us are going to be able to have 1 million by the time of age 60? So I have come up with ways in order for me to retire without breaking the bank. I'm gonna tell you how. I am by no means a financial advisor, 
I am only sharing with you what I did in order to retire at age 45. I made sure I deposited as much as I could when I was working in my 401k. Sometimes I would have one, two jobs. Besides that, with the one or two jobs, I saved. I saved, I cut back, I saved, until I was able to buy my first condo, which was a real estate property. After buying the condo and renting it out and getting rental income, I was able to leverage that and buy another condo and another condo until I acquired a total of 10 condos. And I worked that over the years. And there are advantages and disadvantages to doing real estate investments. And I'm gonna tell you all the disadvantages I was faced with first and then all the advantages. were the constant repairs you have to do, the constant calls from tenants for one reason or another, tenants not paying their rent on time, never being able to get good workmen in order to do simple tasks, or if they do come, they want to charge you a lot of money. There were the properties insurance and taxes, the liability, and the worst of all I found as I was getting older was the inability for you to travel for any length of time without the tenants calling you, texting you, repairs need to be done, you know, just the entire liability. So after a while, when I decided I wanted to be free and to travel, I liquidated and sold all my real estate. And I found something that I think is better. One mistake I made with the real estate market is I didn't sell at the right time with some of my real estate. And when you're invested, you have to know it's all about the bottom line. As long as you're making profit at the end, you're good. You must always come out better than how you went in. I did come out better, but I could have done even better, better <laughs> if I had sold when the market was really high. But situation changed, life changed, and I wanted to get out. So I sold all my real estate, and I decided to start diversifying my portfolio in a way where I can travel easier. So I did make some mistakes. I did make some mistakes with that, and I'm gonna tell you the mistakes so you don't make them. I'm gonna tell you the mistakes first. When I just got into the stock market, I didn't manage my risk. I was doing all kinds of risky things, like Bitcoin, crypto, just throwing my money around. You should never have too much money on one account because then you don't, you lose conception of how hard it was to get that money, and then you start spending it ridiculously right and then when you lose it you'll be like man ew, I'm gonna get that back you can never get it back so one of the first mistakes I made was I did not manage my risk I've learned not to put more than one tenth of your wealth in any one trade or one situation because a trade or a situation can always go against you and you don't want it to send you back to work the second mistake I made was I didn't do my homework. I just bought any stock or equities that I saw on the news or heard in the radio, not knowing that people will hype stocks up, mainly because they have a lot of it and they want to get rid of it. So as soon as you buy it, it crashes. So I would advise you, don't make that mistake. Anywhere you're gonna put your money, whether it be real estate, or gonna be stocks or whatever. Do some kind of homework. Check the fundamentals out. Check the cap rates out. Make sure you do your homework so that it decreases the possibility of you losing your money. The third mistake I made, which I thought was really important, was I didn't decide when to get out of a trade or out of a situation. Like in the real estate market, you know, I when it was way up, I didn't get out. So I lost a quite a bit of my profit on some of my deals. 
In the stock market, it's the same. They say whenever you're gonna make a trade, as soon as you step into a position, just know how much am I willing to lose on this position. So as soon as you see that you reach your max in terms of loss, get out. Because you don't need to know pretty much how much you're gonna make. Because once you're making the money, it's good, right? It's going for you. What you really need to make sure is, how much am I prepared to lose on each situation that I go in, on each position? That's something that I learned the hard way. These are tips I learned the hard way that kept me solid and I still implement them until today. And these tips have enabled me to keep my wealth and be able to travel around the world for the last four years without touching my portfolio. Rule number one, diversification. Always diversify your portfolio. We all have a portfolio, whether it be money in the bank, a car, a house, or savings, whatever it is, we have a portfolio, recognize it. Start writing it down. What is your portfolio? What is my wealth? How much am I worth? How can I build on my wealth? And in writing it down and looking at it, you'll be able to see it on paper. How much am, how much am I worth? What do I need to do in order to increase my wealth? What can I do in order to increase my wealth? In my diversification of my portfolio, I made sure one, I allocated for cash. Because the market will go up, the market will come down, the market will go sideways. I make sure I always leave some cash off the table that can pay my bills for at least six months. Two, I put away some cash in CD. With cash being in CD that I cannot touch, I'm earning interest on that cash. However, I can get access to it in three months, six months, or whatever the term is, in case an emergency arises. Three, I give a large institution part of my portfolio to manage. You should never try to manage all your cash yourself. So I recommend, and that's what I do, I give a large bank some of my portfolio to manage. This way, if anything happens, they don't really care enough to panic. And panic can be very expensive. Four, I leave some money for like risky trades, you know, like crypto, stuff like that that I can earn a good amount on, you know, in a short time, but I know I can lose that money. Five, I manage some of the money myself. And in managing some of the money myself, I do more liquid positions like stocks. You know, stocks are a little bit higher risk than like ETFs and other dividend earning stocks. So I manage some of the money myself. Six, I also taught myself how to option trade. Because when you option trade, you can be more flexible on the market in terms of if the market goes up, if the market comes down, if the market goes sideways, you can be more flexible and you can earn money no matter what. Seven. I put money in dividends. Dividends to me is almost like rental properties without the headache. Because with dividends, you can get payments monthly, every three months, or yearly. So this way, I'm still getting money on my money without having to do all the repairs and fixes. And there's all different kinds of dividends that you can invest in. Again, we all have to do our homework. As Warren Buffett famously said, you have to figure out a way to earn money while you sleep. Because if you're not earning money while you sleep, you will work forever. The eighth thing I do, which is very important, is I reduced my lifestyle to where my monthly expense is bare minimum. And I give myself treats every now and then, but I have a set amount where every month that is what I spend and I make sure that I earn that monthly expense, either from dividends or other trades that I do. 
This way, I never have to touch my portfolio. Over the last four years, I've traveled to South America, Europe, Asia. And to me, I've found three countries that I believe are the best in terms of medical, cost of living, and visa types. And these three countries are, one, Bali. Bali has a lot of visa options, and it's very economically priced. In Bali, you can get a hotel from like $60 to $30. And just as the hotel price is your cheap, so is transportation, so is food, and so is curricular activities that you can do. The medical I found to be a little expensive in Bali because they only have about three or four hospitals, but for all rounds, great option. And it's very safe. The second one you hear about, which is all the rave, is Thailand. Everybody knows about Thailand because Thailand offers the widest options in terms of visa types than you can get. You can get like a 30 day visa just to go learn the language, just to do learn to do Thai boxing. You can get a retirement visa. They have the digital nomad visa. If you can go there and get a visa on arrival for 30 days and you can extend it all the way up to 90 days doing border runs. Thailand offer you a lot of flexible options in terms of visa type. And Thailand medical facilities is number one, one of number one options in Asia. Because they have a lot of hospitals and basically any kind of medical attention you need in the US, they can do it in Thailand. And I've had that personal experience. So Thailand is right up there in terms of one of those great options in terms of places you can go. Thailand has so much to do. There's so many activities that you can do in Thailand, you will not get bored. So it's a great place because it's cheap. There's a lot of things to do. It's very safe and it has a lot of visa options. Last but not least, and my absolute favorite, which is surprised to me too, is Da Nang, Vietnam. Da Nang, Vietnam, I did a video on it in case you want to watch it. It's, you know, it, it's in my videos. Da Nang, Vietnam is one of the best places on earth. The only thing with Vietnam is in order to get there, you need to have a visa. So you apply for the visa, it takes five days, but once you get the visa, they give you 30 days, and then after that, you can do a border run, and then they'll give you three months, which will give you four months in Vietnam. When I'm in Da Nang, I go to the family hospital, which is more like of an American hospital. They have a doctor that speak English, and I did my whole physical, including CT, eye exam, a minor eye surgery, Everything and it was only for two hundred dollars. I mean blood work, ultrasound, you name it, only two hundred dollars. And you can find like really nice condos in Da Nang by the beach for like sixteen dollars a night, including kitchen. The only drawback with Da Nang is that if you go during the rainy season, it rains a lot. So it can rain sometimes for weeks at a time. But I feel as if the advantages with Denong outweighs the disadvantages. I hope as I continue to vlog, I hope this helped you on your journey. Please like and subscribe and share if possible. And hope to see you soon.